I'm Neil Blake. I'm the Port Phillip Baykeeper based at Port Phillip Echo Centre in St Kilda. Our, our organisation connects people to the natural environment and particularly to empower them with ways that they can look after the environment. We're uh, just almost at the end of St Kilda Pier, just beyond the end of St Kilda Pier, uh, and at the beginning of the breakwater, which is a 650 metre long rock wall, which was built in 1956 to protect boats, uh, and now it's protecting penguins. Well, St Kilda penguin colony didn't really come to light until um, 1986, when uh, there was a, a development proposal for St Kilda Harbour that um, raised the issue about what things lived in the area and it was discovered that there was a small colony of penguins there. It turns out that they were the first penguin species of any kind on the whole planet that have actually taken up residence on a man-made structure. There were a few people who were passionate about nature, believing that the penguins here uh, deserved a chance. Getting to understand the environment they were living in and how they were surviving here was an important first step. We have to stop plastic from getting into Port Phillip Bay and into the marine environment generally. The bay is a relatively enclosed area so any plastics that do get washed into it from the catchments are likely to stay within that system. Very little transfers out into Bass Strait. So we're here at the top of the beach in West Beach St Kilda to do our regular survey site down here. I, um, was looking for an effective method to do beach audits because I was aware of uh, penguins, for example, getting tangled up in six-pack holes, etc. And I knew too that there was also an ecological impact from the finer bits of plastic. Uh, we come back to the same place each time and count and collect, categorise any trash that we find within nine one square metre quadrants spread across the whole beach. To collect the samples from the river, we trawl using a manta net. What we capture is indicative of what's coming out of the whole catchment. So we are analysing the trawl samples from the Yarra and the Maribyrnong River. What happens with plastic items like these, nature can't really break them down because plastic is made of oil and treated with lots of different chemicals when they break down so small that you can't see them anymore with the naked eye or even under a microscope the plastic molecules will still be around in the environment. This kind of data that we are collecting and analyzing uh, is really important for us to get evidence if we want to see change in the world. The government might want to take action and do larger scale litter programs to prevent litter from getting into the waterways. And if we have a large data set as a baseline of what is happening now, then it will be easier for them to evaluate if their programs that they're going to do are actually working. Last year, we submitted that plastic pollution in waterways was a threat. That submission was successful, so that uh, sets the scene for further uh, strategies and initiatives to address plastic pollution, which would not have happened if it wasn't in, uh, included in that policy. It only seems reasonable to me that uh, the benefits that I've enjoyed uh, should be passed on to the next generation. Uh, it's a bit greedy to just take it all up and not really care about uh, what we leave behind. This work is important to me because the waterways are the arteries of the earth. If we don't look after them, we're not looking after ourselves. <laughs>